Harper. Harper! Take her back to Ramona's tent. I've taken her back three times already. I'll take her back again, then. It's no use. She just keeps running back here. Easy, lass. Easy. Look, you can stay here, but you must sleep under your own blanket. Harper, you sleep at the bottom of my bed, just to make sure nothing happens that's not in army regulations. What? some clothes on. She hasn't got any clothes. Well, tell her Mona to go and get her some, damn you. I asked her. She told me to shag off. It's loaded, Harper. I know. Army regulations state never leave loaded weapons lying around the camp. You must have missed that one. Listen, it's not very often I raise my fist to a man, but when I do, I'll leave evidence of it. I believe that. So what's between you and Ramona? Ramona wants me to marry her and take her back to Ireland. Well, since you've got a young son running around the camp, I don't see much wrong with that, Harper. I don't. So? I love Ramona. I love her a lot. I love her enough not to take her back to my bloody country. And she's Spanish. And she's got a son born out of wedlock. My son! For Christ's sake, no man or woman in Ireland would look at the side of the road she walked on. And, of course, there's my mother. Your mother? When I was 17, my mother made a match for me with a girl called Annie Brady from Dunwile. My mother adored her. And, you know, she was the most beautiful girl you've ever seen since the first day. You're not telling me you're married, are you, Albert? No, I'm not! Annie Brady died on me. And, you know, I don't think my mother ever recovered. And I'll tell you, if I was to arrive home in Ireland with a Spanish wife and a child, well, she'd never forgive me. Harper, look around you. What do you see? I see soldiers. No, you don't. You see truth tellers. Liars, mongrels, bastards. Men who have tumbled into this war. The madness that is this war. That's what you see, isn't it? That's what I see. And they all have one thing in common. What's that? They live by the sword. And they're prepared to die by the sword. They have little else, but they have honour. And you're going to have to show the mother of your child that same honour, Harper. So start praying, Pat. Good morning. Oui. 
probably are too hard on him, Richard. Poor fellow's only trying to be pleasant. I don't trust the bugger. Too bloody good to be true. He's just trying to please, Richard. He's frightened, far from home. Prisoners are always anxious to please. That's why they smile all the time. All right. And why is that then, Jack? Well, I've been that soldier. I spent six months as a prisoner of the French. I was captured after I was wounded. The French surgeon hacked this off. Took his bloody time about it, too. Something about him. He's as strong as a bull, but he walks like a woman. His eyes are everywhere. You can never see what he's looking at. He's like a gun laid up. All grease, but ready to go off. Could you persuade Barclay to convene a court of honour tonight? When we make camp? I think I've proof he's not the man he says he is. Well, the only way Barclay will do that is if the Frenchie has someone to speak for him. Sort of, sort of a devil's advocate. Well, you could do that. Well, very well. Word of warning, though, Richard. Barclay will get into a fearful wax if you get it wrong. Don't worry. I'll hang the bugger out to dry. How do I look, Ellis? Sir? Good book. Very. Voltaire, sir. I found it in the woods. Pity there's only a few pages. What? You found it in the woods? Where? Under the colonel, sir. That could be a code book, couldn't it? Could be. But I don't have the book. It was all bloody. I could only save a few pages. Well, where is it? I'll be back soon, lads. And when I come back, I want you in my bed. I mean, I'll sleep out here, like. Right. Hope you damn well know what you're doing, Sharp. Some people back in London get very picky about playing games with parole. Can we start, sir? French Colonel's tunic, sir. Put it on. Mettez-la. Perfect fit, sir. Now, put this on. This is supposed to be his own tunic, sir. The one he put under the so-called colonel's head. See, sir? His own tunic doesn't fit. But the colonel's fits him perfectly. I believe this man is really Colonel LaRue of the French Imperial Guard. I believe he murdered his captain in the woods and changed clothes with him. I would like to plead with this court of honour to revoke this man's parole until Major Munro returns from Burgos, sir. Well... In just a moment, sir, the prisoner would like to say something in his own defence through me. Of course. Carry on, Jack. 